but the church doesn't, we don't seem to, Yeah. we're more congregational, we're more program, we're more yeah. uh, music oriented, we're more, <laughs> yeah, we really are. Let, let's offer a, another contrast to what we're talking about. So, because at the, on Saturday, um, and then I, I followed up with you a little bit at lunch. Yeah. But you mentioned soulish imitations. Yeah. Of, of what the spirit is actually doing. But we come up with, and we, we contend for a soulish imitation of what's actually taking place. Maybe, would you elaborate on that for our camera? Okay. Well, <laughs> well, right, you keep looking in the camera kind of thing, yeah? yeah. Well, uh, actually, I, I wrote that word in 2003 or four in Kenya mm -hmm. uh, after a quick observation there. Um, the soulish imitation is the creation of, I, I want to say this right, it's the creation of sincere men's interpretation of what God intends. Yes. Right. Yeah, that never produces the effect hmm. that they desire. Meaning that we, we have this knowledge of what's true. Mm -hmm. yeah? I, I don't struggle with that idea. Right. The problem comes in that we try to, out of our own mm -hmm. interpretation of that, to produce that. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And what we produce is a soulish imitation, that mm -hmm. which comes from the mind, the will, and the emotion, mm -hmm. rather than a spiritual reality that can only come from the Spirit, through the Spirit, by the Spirit, yeah? yeah. It's that whole place. And yeah. the reason for it is, 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 if you connect the dots here, the reason for it is that until man is truly restored to that place of sonship, mm -hmm. man remains basically out of order with God, mm. yeah? Mm -hmm. yeah. He, 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 he remains in that place where we all go to our own individual room when we come into the family house kind of thing. Right, right, yeah? right. And, and we, we, begin to, we begin to look at the scripture and, and, and I want to use that word sincere in a very real way because sure. I don't know insincere people. No, yeah? right. I, I don't know people that are insincere about what they're doing. They really, it's, it's coming from the heart or whatever you want to say. I mean, they're not trying to be malevolent, they're not trying to deceive them, they're not trying to do any of those things, but left to themselves yeah. to interpret right. yeah. what, what God is trying to communicate, mm -hmm. they will always end constructing something that's an imitation. Right. And, and it may produce some good results in a sense, but it will not produce what they really intended for. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, we, I think you understand what I'm saying. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and, and it's it's critical that we recognize that, and I, mm -hmm. I know that you I know that you heard that the other day, and I yeah. and, and maybe some of the other pastors heard that there mm -hmm. the other day, um, but it's an important statement because it's a call to repentance, it's a call to recognize, it's a call to recognize that that in the sincerity of our lives mm -hmm. and our pursuit of God, mm -hmm. that that we just have gone down what seems to be the right pathway, but it's exactly. really a parallel pathway exactly. that doesn't lead to the destination that they were hungry for. We're, we're, we're attracted to that exact concept because we, the way we describe it here in our fellowship is we say there are God things and then there are good things. Good things that yeah. were well-intentioned, but they weren't God. Yeah. Yeah, and we're trying to, we're trying to contend for God things. Yeah. So that's, that's what, back to the, the original thing we were talking about. That, that experience that I had of stepping over the line kind of thing. Yes. It, it, it's God coming, and I, I think I can say that, it's God purposely coming in this hour, yeah. not just to reveal himself as Father, yeah. but to get us on the other side where, where our lives okay. come back into order so that we can okay. live responsively to him mm -hmm. rather than trying to interpret the moment by ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. And, and yeah. That's, that's really what a walk in the Spirit is about. Yeah. It's not, we'll have our spiritual phenomena, those things will take place, mm -hmm. but it's not about that. It's, yes. it's about, Jesus said, I and the Father, we are one. Mm -hmm. yeah. Meaning yes. everything begins with Him, everything flows from a place of agreement with me, really? and therefore the Holy Spirit is, a, is free to affect it wherever that's happening. Absolutely. Yeah? And, and this is, you know, if, if I'm prophesying, that's where we're going. Yeah. That's where we're going. That, that's it. The, the restoration of man brings the restoration of order, and yes. the restoration of order comes, then the things that we, we've wanted to see function, they begin to function, That's good. not because of our effort, but because 
Right, absolutely. Yeah, because our lives are restored and brought yeah. back into a place of order, mm-hmm. and we're living relationally with God yes. in a place of responsiveness. From the connection. And we just sit back. I mean, basically, awesome. we sit back. We quit laboring, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, that's right. Exactly. We rest. Yeah, which is exactly what I was invited to 41 years ago. Yeah, wow. Come unto me. Yeah. You have a labor. I will yeah, give exactly. you rest. Well, I had no idea what that meant, but yeah. today I understand. Yeah. Somewhat. Took a while. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs>